Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. The roadmap has been updated, so let us take a look at the changes. As always, a huge thank you to my patrons and channel members, in particular to my latest channel member, New Life, and a big welcome back to my patron, Crash Lando. Thank you guys so much for the support. So this week's update for the roadmap unfortunately brought some bad news. So we will get this bad news out of the way first and then move on to the more exciting things. But as we were kind of all expecting, but severely hoping it wouldn't happen, Salvage was pushed back again to quarter two 2022. So this is June or end of June schedule next year. Now it is officially a new meme, just as they have been almost getting rid of the 30k meme, Salvage will definitely take its place. So the reasoning for this pushback is due to what they were speaking about a little while ago with the core gameplay pillar aiming to deliver features to Squadron 42 first so that they can get them in and working and more fleshed out before integrating them into the PU, which will benefit both projects in the sense that Squadron will benefit from the additional resources and dedicated focus. And when we receive it in the PU, it will be more complete and polished. Now, what this means is instead of it being the very basic hand salvage and mostly just the back end salvage tech, they will introduce both hand operated salvage as well as ship operated salvage with it specifically saying hull stripping and repair using the systems on board the Drake Vulture. So there are two things to look into here. Firstly, of course, it really sucks that once again, salvage has gone. At this point, it's probably just better to remove it for now, but it is what it is. And when it does eventually arrive, I'm sure it will be far greater than we could have expected. So of course it is a bit of a punch in the gut, but there are a lot of other things to get excited for. But secondly, it seems to be clearly stating that the Drake Vulture will have the capabilities to repair to some degree. Either that, or it's saying that when salvage comes, we will be able to perform repairs with the tools as well. Although this sentence really does make it out as though the Vulture can do some form of repairing. Now I'm assuming it will have the same functionality as the salvage tools as we did here on Inside Star Citizen a little while ago that the salvage multi-tool will have the ability to repair as well. So stripping the hulls down and storing those materials into a canister to then perform a simple repair patch-up job. Not a full repair, think more along the lines of a rudimentary patch-up job which will still require a full repair from a proper garage or a proper ship like the Crucible but the patch up should be enough to get the ship back to a place where it can get fully repaired and maybe stop a hull breach, for example. Now, although we do need a lot more information as to whether this is intended or just a badly worded sentence, I'm not personally a huge fan of the Vulture being able to perform simple repairs, and I am an owner of the Drake Vulture, as it is really just a sort of introductory dedicated salvage ship. And I wouldn't really want to take that functionality away from the actual repair ships. I'm not completely opposed to it. It could be an interesting method to just, if you spot a vulture flying around and you've taken a scratch, you could ask it to just patch that up for a little while. But it will be interesting to hear what CIG have to say about this for sure, as just getting some clarification would be quite important. Anyway, long story short, Salvage is now scheduled to release in quarter two 2022. And instead of it being the back end tech, it will be more of a fully functioning feature for both ship and hand salvage with the Drake Vulture, not the Reclaimer, I wouldn't think, but it does include repair in some way too. So again, a big shame that it's been pushed, but to be fair, I was definitely expecting this and just optimistically crossing everything I have that it wouldn't happen. Anyway, let us get on to the good news. There are quite a few new features that are now added to the release viewer. For 316 specifically, we have derelict ships points of interest. And this says points of interest that will be scattered on planets. These will be derelict spaceships with some type of activity, be that a puzzle, a traversal challenge or hostile AI and some type of reward for resolving said activity. Now, I do love the sound of more derelict ships planet side and in space for players to find and explore, providing a lot more gameplay. The current derelicts are some of my favorite missions just because they look cool and you can gather up boxes and loot bodies. So I'm very happy to see more are coming. Now, it was also mentioned in the monthly report that the design team have been scattering parts of the Drake Caterpillar around planet side locations and adding puzzles inside them with currently both vanilla and puzzle modules available. Vanilla modules are what we have already and the puzzle modules contain these puzzles with lootable containers as a reward. Now I would love it if they didn't give any indication as to which of these modules 
you were going to so we couldn't tell if it was the vanilla or the puzzle derelict just so that we can be surprised and have to deal with it when we get there uh, but from what we have seen already in the past and heard in the past I think these puzzles are planned to have things like laser trip mines but it would also be very cool to have AI that are not just inside the ship but capable of patrolling outside as well giving us a reason to approach maybe on foot or via a ground vehicle from a distance so they don't hear us coming that would be great for teamwork as well as making a getaway if you had to get something and sort of stealthily take that and then you get found out trying to drive away while you're being chased down would be nice rather than the ai just being stuck inside which is what we currently have with the starfarer rex really excited to see more derelicts and so very happy that these are scheduled to come with 316 and i would expect over this next quarter we will hear more about them on inside star citizen now the next 316 feature are the mining gadgets. These we have seen a few times and will help to modify the rock that you are mining and assist the player with mining a deposit. So basically we'll be able to attach this device physically to a mineable deposit in FPS to modify its stats, making mining either easier and safer or quicker and riskier. So the results are pretty much the same as the modules and consumables, but it provides us more choice on how we go about this. Instead of the device being attached to your laser, these can be in your ship ready when you need them based on the rock that you come up against. So nice to see some more additions for mining and I really must get back to doing more of this as it does seem to be somewhat improved with 315 and the latest scanner updates, but it did still feel a little fiddly. So more testing is certainly needed. The next feature we have is a quick one that I'll just brush past. It's the Dying Star Arena Commander map, which increases the overall size, adding new playable areas, more cover options and new space assets. Nothing overly excited for me personally, but I will certainly be jumping into AC one of these days soon, maybe with the org just to get some dogfighting practice. Now this next one is going to be a very welcome sight. It is DNA Head Texture Updates, which is implementing art updates for DNA Archetype Heads that will improve the quality of all DNA heads for both players and common NPCs. Now, this has been a long time needed. We know CIG have been working on Squadron 42 specific characters for a while to bring them all to the current standard. So it will be great getting them for the PU as well. Will it include the new hair tech? I really hope so. We have just heard months and months, if not years about this new hair tech. I would love to see that actually in game. And I think they did bring in a couple of new heads with a couple of new hairstyles for Orison, so it must be getting the rest of that in. Also, I do hope it contains my face, as I was scanned during CitizenCon 2947, so fingers crossed I'll be able to actually play as myself. Regardless though, I will be very happy to get a much needed quality update to not only the player heads, but NPCs as well, and I'm actually pretty excited to see the difference. So the last two new additions for 316 are very exciting features for me personally, the first is the Gravlev Physics Rework, which is a significant rework of the flight and driving mechanics model for the Gravlev vehicles when hovering. So think along the lines of the Dragonfly and the Nox, with the aim, they say, to improve the general feel and stability, resulting in a far better experience for players using hoverbikes. Now, this is a very welcome addition that has been a long time coming, which I actually didn't expect to see for a while, if I'm honest. And I also hope alongside this, CIG provide more reason to use ground vehicles going forwards. Maybe the new derelicts are a start of that, but I am so very excited to test these bikes out in 316, as currently they are a bit of a death trap. Now, the last but personally most exciting feature to come with 316 is ship-to-ship -ship refueling. Now, this we have seen very little snippets of on Inside Star Citizen with the Starfarer boom arm coming into play. We have heard from CIG that they would really prefer for it to be working before Pyro comes as the refueling in Pyro will be much less available. And also we did hear that it will be using the global chat initially to coordinate with refueling. But I'm hoping that they can get a proper beacon working for its release. Otherwise it will be probably just pure chaos. Anyway, ship refueling is going to be another gameplay loop coming in alongside medical for this year, which was a great new addition. And I'm thoroughly enjoying playing as a paramedic. Uh, the idea of running as a team on a star fair is so exciting to me. And I can't wait to see it unfold on Inside Star Citizen this quarter. But let us just hope that the star fair gets a bit of a interior facelift as it is a bit dated at the moment. So that was currently all of the new 316 editions. I wouldn't be surprised if more show up between now and release, as well as 
potentially some of them slip. We do still have the whole seat on the roadmap for 316, so fingers crossed that will come, as it should also mean the cargo refactor is rolling out. But that can all change, of course, from week to week. Now, for me personally, it's a shame that Salvage slipped again, of course, but I'm just going to ignore that feature for now and focus on the new and exciting features that we have in 315 and we'll be getting in 316 and, of course, 317. But with that said, let's move on to the new additions for later patches coming next year. So for Alpha 317, which is the very first patch of 2022 at the end of March, we have NPC Taxi Missions Tier 0. So this will involve NPCs requesting transport between rest stops, so not planet side, but with the rewards determined by the speed, safety and comfort in which the player delivers the NPC to their destination. So I suspect that the comfort will be determined by two things. A, what you are using or what ship you're using, and B, how you're flying, so not throwing the NPC around in the back with the force reactions. Likely based on the NPC's preferences, Origin ships will probably be king here, specifically the 600i, the 890 Jump for example, but even the RSI Phoenix finally giving owners of those ships more of a money-making ability. Speed is quite self-explanatory, the quicker that you get the NPC to their destination, the better, but with the injection of safety, so just speeding everywhere is probably ill-advised, as of course any damage will most definitely reduce the payout, but also comfort will likely include the NPC being flung around inside based on the maneuvers that the pilot is pulling. So skilled piloting is going to become even more necessary if you want a better payout. Love that. The most exciting feature to make it into 317 so far is selling items to shops. So it's a shame it's not coming for 316 by the end of this year. I know Tony Zurovec said they're aiming or they're hoping to get selling in by the end of the year. But of course, it does not look like that's going to happen now. When it does come though, it will really give us loot goblins something to get on with. And this feature will give players the ability to sell items from our local inventory to shops using a new interface powered by building blocks. Now, it also supports the loot generation features, allowing us to sell these items that we find for money. A very important system that will see me just basically looting everywhere. But do bear in mind that this won't be the selling of ships and maybe not even components, ship components or weapons to start with. I think it is specifically just items like FPS weapons, armor, clothing tools, maybe fruit, just personal items that we have with the personal inventory. So for 318, the quarter two 2022 patch scheduled to release around the end of June. We have, well, two new additions. We know Salvage is now pushed back here, but that is to coincide with the new edition of the Drake Vulture, a light salvaging ship, which is going to be the starting point for when uh, Salvage comes out. Again, it'll be nice to hear what this whole repair thing is talking about. So finally, we have a few removals from the release view, which is mostly due to the core gameplay schedule changes that we heard about from Rich Tyra. Now, the Origin M50 engine swap, dynamic door alignment, player slide, prone improvements, physicalized weapon handling and shield emitters are all now removed and being rescheduled. So they will reappear. Not all of them, maybe some of them will reappear sooner than others, I'm sure. Uh, but all of these are off the release viewer for the time being and will come back at a later date. Bit of a shame about the weapon handling and shield emitters, as I was very much looking forward to seeing those two, but the rest I wasn't too bothered about. So there we have it, kind of a mixed bag for the roadmap update. And although Salvage is now pushed way back to mid next year, I'm more than happy with what is still coming for the end of the year and looking forward to delving into it when the patch comes along. With that said though, if you do enjoy my content, please do consider subscribing and helping the channel to grow. Also, I am having an absolute blast with 315 over on twitch.tv forward slash Ryan. Hopefully we're looking at a live release sometime this week. But if you do want to hang out with myself, my awesome community, checking out all that 315 has to offer, by all means, come and say hello. Hit that thumbs up if you don't mind. Does the channel a big favor and tick that notification bell if you would like to be notified when my videos go live. Thank you to my patrons and channel members again. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.